how high above the earth do you have to be to be able to look back at it with your eye and see something? How high for a GoPro? How high for a very, very large lens jammed onto one to, to pull in everything you can see with your eye? How high do you have to get up to see the entire earth in one visual image, even, even if it's too big for you to really comprehend? To see the earth as a disk, a rocket, or you would need to go up 800 miles or 2,500 miles or somewhere in the middle. For a wide-angle camera, 800 miles, maybe, or a human eye, or whatever. But a camera can weigh one ounce and you weigh several hundred pounds. Sorry to tell you that. A GoPro on a rocket might see most of the Earth, or all of it, depending on whether or not it's pointed correctly, at 4,000 miles up. A... uh, Low Earth orbit or um, geostationary transfer orbit, which is a middle between the extremes of 25,000 miles and, let's say, you know, 1,000 miles or whatever, uh, can do it with a cost of $100 per launch minimum. That's you just sending up the camera equipment because you'd have to put the cameras everywhere for a reason. The rocket is going to rotate on its axis slightly. Also, because it's going around the Earth, I don't know if you know this, if you put it up at this position, that's great. It can look down. But then as it goes around the Earth, it's actually going to keep positioning itself, pointing at basically the same star or whatever, because of inertia, mechanical inertia. Unless you make it tip exactly once every 24 hours or once every orbit, it's going to point away from the Earth or away from what you're pointing it at eventually. So, slap a bunch of cameras on it. Okay, that adds drag, it adds weight, but okay. Got 100 to $200 million to throw away. Most low-Earth orbit... Uh, uh, items never go more than 1,200 miles up, 1,320 miles, or one-third of the Earth's radius in altitude. This is just the way they do it. That The fact that you have the Van Allen belts that are going to mess with the electronics eventually, and most things that go further out so you can get a decent look at the Earth, which would require more than this usually, especially with the GoPro, oddly enough, is going to require that you have a cruising stage where you're going around and around the Earth in a stabilizing orbit where it changes slightly or you're making it escalate to get higher and higher slowly in little leapfrog effects to get further out. Or maybe you're trying to alter it to where it's egg-shaped to where you can slingshot yourself even further out. These maneuvers, you're not worried about pointing a camera somewhere. You're you're worried about having a successful mission. If you're going 2,500 or 25,000 miles, excuse me, up, you're putting a geostationary uh, weather satellite up. It may be gargantuan enough that sticking cameras on it would be a good idea, but... Every time you throw off extra weight to get that extra bit of efficiency so you can get away with the least amount of fuel to get it up there, because you have to do that. There's no choice. You're going to have to have multiple layers of cameras. You're going to need eight to point every direction to see everything and a couple on top and bottom, and you're going to be blowing them off because you're going to get rid of them until you just have just the satellite, which in and of itself is a camera. But you can record all that, and you could even record it on an onboard recorder from all the cameras, potentially. And you might not have a glitch for transitioning between each camera. And it might not fail completely. And, or you could do a live feed. Well, you're chewing up bandwidth they're using to make sure the damn thing actually works. They're doing it so they can correct orbit problems, because they always happen. And make sure they're communicating with their satellite they're putting up there, which is worth a shit ton of money. (coughs) Arguably more than the launch itself. But you might be able to piggyback. Okay. And what have you achieved? You have a 50-50 shot of getting a recording from launch all the way up into orbit, but you're going to have at least one gap in the recording at least one time or another because it goes through the ionosphere, Van Allen belts, and other. And I guarantee at least one camera is going to fail because you're going to talk about dozens of cameras at this point attached to each piece that eventually gets thrown off. But hey, if the data records it, the uh, your spy satellite, excuse me, uh, weather satellite, totally not going to be a problem doing that. Um, might use that as the first test recording. It might feed back two or three days of video because it takes several days sometimes for these things to be put up into a stable, reliable orbit for something that's being done for a shit ton of money. What if we do a short one so that we can have a YouTube feed? Okay, Elon Musk did that. Go look at his feed. Elon Musk launching a car into orbit. Look for all the glitches and screw-ups. Everybody pointed out every one of them in real time. And that was an attempt at doing exactly what we're talking about. Now, the questions. Why is it we have zero pieces of rear-view video footage showing a rocket leaving the Earth's atmosphere, pointing the camera backwards at the ground, 
showing a clear globe of the Earth, undeniable in all its glory. Because it would have to go too high and take too damn long to get there, and in the process it probably tip ass over tea kettle from our perspective when it's perfectly stable in an orbit. Next, it would have to do all sorts of maneuvers in order to do an orbit high enough, which means it's not going to be pointing all the time. And if you made it to where it had enough cameras to point at the Earth no matter what, you'd see glitches as it changes from one camera perspective to another, and people would still say, that proves it's fake. Video footage is plentiful showing Earth from high altitude, but never an example from NASA or any other showing a seamless blast off into the heavens with the globe Earth in its wake. Again, too high. Anything that's going to go high enough to look back at the Earth on purpose is going to be a camera, and they don't need to record the trip because it's boring. Watch Elon Musk's video feed of him putting a car into interplanetary pathway. We need footage of a complete Earth perfectly visible round clear as day. The only examples we have are from the missions to go to the moon. Humans haven't gone past low Earth orbit since then, and equipment rarely does, but when it does, it's spending more time trying to make sure it can find its own ass than take a picture of the Earth. And you can see some of these recordings, and they look supremely bad. <clears throat> they have bandwidth limitations and weight limitations. Some of those cameras are incredibly tiny because they want to use the least amount of weight, an insignificant amount of weight. Every nut and bolt is weighed when they do these, so that's saying something. We just need that footage of a complete Earth because of reasons. Not the high altitude stuff. Please, can you debunk the go fast rocket incident? It isn't enough to prove anything. It's just assuming it's CGI or hoax. People point to this footage as proof of a water-based firmament barrier or glass ceiling to the Earth. There are some people, some other supposed rockets crashing with the firmament footage out there, but the go fast clip seems to be one of the better examples. As has been explained about it, and even in the comment section, in one time in at least one of the copies, in the description, <clears throat> it doesn't hit a barrier. It has a set of cables and weights on it that as it's fired, they decided to spin stabilize it, which is very reliable and dumb. It, it works almost all the time. But it's spinning like an ice skater with her arms pulled in. So it throws its arms out. But because it's trying to drop itself to zero rotations, it doesn't throw its arms out and slow down. It throws them out and then disconnects them. In this case, they're weights and cables. So it stops almost dead. And it's very, very sudden, like it's hit something at high altitude, like a, a barrier, except that it's continuing to go. It didn't hit any firmament. Now, a person who wants to believe there's a glass ceiling over the Earth, which is preposterous, is not going to listen to what I have to say. But you can see hundreds of videos going up to similar or higher altitudes doing the same thing and also not doing the same thing. Next. Isn't there even a single piece of video footage showing a blast-off? Then, bam, globe Earth in all its glory right there for the world to see. Irrefutable. It seems so fundamental. Scotch taping a GoPro to the side of any one of these rockets would do the trick. I would prefer bolts and nuts, but you get the idea. I want this footage more than I want my next breath. Footage that shows the entire globe Earth, not just an angle of the piece of the Earth but from a high altitude. Okay. Isn't it strange? It doesn't seem to exist. We've been searching forever for even just one clip. Okay, now one of the things I have to point out is you are not able to see more than a certain angle of your reality. You use your ears as extra data to be able to figure out what's in the room. I'm in a darkened room. For all you know, I'm in a garage. I could be in a, an open-air amphitheater. I could be anywhere. Mysterious, isn't it? But I know what environment I'm in. But I can't see behind me. We spend most of our lives accepting the fact that we have very limited sensory capability. I have slightly wider angle view than you do because both of my eyes are active right now and I can actually use them both. What's more is if I use this eye looking here, I can do the pirate patch trick and look up with the other eye and see in the dark because I'm not pointing it straight at the, ca at the camera. I'm literally pointing it at the edge of my screen. When I do that, left eye is blind but the right eye isn't pirate patch. That's what it's for, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, <clears throat> I exist as a person that sees a wider angle than you all do. I would be able to appreciate the globe Earth from orbit easier, but it would still be cut off this way. I have a very squashed Panavision view of the world this way. It helps me when I'm riding, but, you know, riding a bicycle, but it doesn't give me any more precision than you. But I'm eminently aware that I can't see behind me, so I use my ears a lot. At one time, I spent a short period of time relatively. Being blind, I've also been deaf at one time. 
the biggest defect I ever dealt with, if anybody's curious, is not being able to speak. Your ability to communicate turns out to be much more important sometimes than being able to see or hear. Trust me on that. Being able to talk to somebody is so goddamn important when you're trying to deal with shit not working. And therein lies our problem here. There is no level of proof you can provide to someone who is simply playing a game where they say, I won't accept your explanation. We had an election in the United States where the previous president lost. There is no such thing as proof to the people who don't like that they lost. For them, it's them personally losing. There are people on earth who will never say or admit, just to get your attention and just to get it get interacting with you, that the earth can't be round or that you can't go into space or some other damn thing or that vaccines can't work. They will never, ever, ever admit that they're not right. It's not because they believe what they're saying or not. That's gone beyond that. It's because they want to say something to get people to interact with them. They're desperately lonely sometimes, I think. And this person is not one of those people. This person is looking at the same problem we all have. We don't have $200 million up to a $1 billion to send a bunch of GoPros up into space to do this. The best bet you could find is find a European Space Union, or hell with it, just have Elon Musk do it, where he sends off a spacecraft that is mechanically and uh, gyroscopically stabilized, where it can go into orbit and always point the camera at the Earth and keep going. That would be, if you're not aware of it, someone's actually did a paper on it. I can't find it right now. But the amount of effort it would take to keep the thing gyroscopically tilting against its will of wanting to stay in just a mechanically stable position, sending something like that into space with a camera pointing back at the Earth and continually adjusting its behavior to where you keep going up into higher, higher orbit and to point the camera down and just fire it to where you'd aim, if you're not aware of it, you would point straight down at the North Pole. The amount of energy and effort and and engineering for that would be the equivalent to sending a rocket to the moon. In fact, that would be almost identical in the amount of effort. And that was a billion dollars bare minimum. And all you would do is send a camera into space and some schmuck would say fake. Do you understand how absolutely not worth it a person would say that is? It doesn't matter if you, if you took a flat earther, a dedicated flat earther who's part of a cult, a cult-like personality, his champion moment would be to die in space saying there is no such thing as a round earth. He would be hailed as a hero and he would die in infamy. That is the attitude these people have. Now, the person who's asking this question is probably just someone caught in the middle of this. Like, when I listened to, like an idiot, sovereign citizen stuff until I realized, no, this isn't true because none of them are, they're all failing the sniff test because they can't prove anything. This is an example where it can be proven, but it's insanely expensive. Yes, the earth is round and you can do this kind of filming. But it required the same amount of effort that, oh yeah, Elon Musk is planning on going to Mars. Yeah, that test run where he tried to stabilize cameras. You might have noticed he was trying to stabilize cameras and do a recording feed. Got pretty close, but the rotation rate was a little too high and it wasn't perfectly stable. Oh, well, he's getting better at that. I pretty much guarantee you that when he does the launch to send a piece of equipment to Mars, it'll be a piece of equipment, not a person first, and have one come back by relaunching from Mars, which is the experiment he's, he's actually talking about recently. I guarantee you the first launch he does will have a feature where it has a continuous live feed for anyone who wants to bore themselves to death, and it will absolutely do what you're asking. 2030? Earliest? One of the richest men on the planet who actually does this shit. You're going to wait a few years. Yeah, they could have done this when they were doing the moon launch, I guess, but that wasn't their priority. Their priority was not dying in space. But anyway, unless anybody wants to develop a multi-multi-stack rocket set, which I've only seen two or three Kerbal versions, um, you're not going to be able to have this kind of video. And it's not easy. It's not simple. And in some ways, it's almost impossible unless you have a shit ton of money and you get lucky. Watch Elon Musk, really rich guy, fail repeatedly. All those booster rockets crashing violently. He knew that was going to happen. This would be a hundred times worse. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.